Hello everyone, welcome to another Stata tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some basic graphs using Stata. I'm also going to go over exporting your graphs so that you can use them in your reports, presentations, or papers. Your one-stop shop for resources on making graphs in Stata is the visual overview for creating graphs, which is part of the official Stata website. I'll put a link to this in the YouTube description as well as on Canvas. This is a great site that will help you create almost any kind of graph that you can think of. You first select the style of graph and then you click on the type of graph that looks most like what you want to do. Once you've done that, you'll get an example with the commands that you need to use. I highly recommend bookmarking this while you're working with Stata. I've loaded up our campus crime data set. We're gonna use this to show some examples. One of the most basic kinds of graphs that we will create is a scatter plot. To create a scatter plot, all we need to do is type scatter and then the two variables that we want to put in our scatter plot. The order here is important. The first variable that you type will be on the y axis and the second variable will be on the x axis. For example, we could create a scatter plot of crime against police. Once you run this command, the graph will pop up in a new window. We'll come back to this window later and talk about some of the things you can do here. Another very common kind of graph would be a line graph. If we want to make a line graph, we just type line and then the variables that we want to use. Again, the y-axis variable is going to be first and the x-axis variable is second. Let's make a line graph of crime and enrollment. Now, we immediately should notice that something is very wrong here. This does not look like how we would have expected a line graph to look, with the lines connecting points going all over the place on this graph. The problem with this is that the lines connect the points in order that they appear in the data set based on our current sorting. If we go over to the data browser, we can see that these data points are not in order of the enrollment numbers. So what we're gonna to have to do before we make a line graph is to always sort by the x-axis variable. So I'm gonna sort by enrollment. If you are working with time series data, this is critical that typically your line graph will have the time variable on the x-axis. It's very important to always sort by the time variable when you're gonna make a graph. We're back in the data browser and we can now see that the data points are in ascending order of enrollment. I'm gonna close out of this and create the line graph again. You can see now that this graph makes a whole lot more sense. We can combine scatter plots and line graphs if we want to overlay a regression line on top of a scatter plot. To do this, we're first going to have to generate the predicted values. Let's return to the original scatter plot of crime and police and regress crime on police. To get the predicted values, I just need to predict, name the new variable, I'll call it crime hat with the option XB. Next, I need to sort the data set by the X axis variable. It's currently sorted by enrollment, but now I need to sort by police. Now we're ready to create the graph. For this, we need a new command called two-way. Two-way allows us to place multiple plots on a single axis. This is exactly what we wanna do. While this command is called two-way, we can actually put as many graphs together as we want. Creating the graphs is as simple as it was before. We simply put them inside parentheses. First, I'm going to make my scatter plot of crime and police. And then I'm going to make my line graph, but this time of crime hat, the predicted values, and police. When I run this, I now get both the scatter plot and the line graph on a single 
axis, exactly what I wanted. This is a good time to talk about the graph editor. Once you've initially created your graph and it pops up in this new window, we can then tweak the graph to look exactly how we want it to look. We do this by clicking on Start Graph Editor, which is the small button in the toolbar of a bar graph with a pencil on it. I'm now taken to a new screen where I have some more options. I can now click on any element of the graph and customize it. For, for example, maybe I want to add a title to my graph. To do that, I can go over to the Objects pane on the right, go down to Positional Titles, double click on Title. Now I can type something in such as Crime and Police. That title will now show up at the top of my graph. I can edit any element of the graph by either double clicking on it on the graph, for example, employed officers. I could, for example, capitalize employed if I want, or I could have gone into X axis title and then changed it there. By default, a two way graph does not include a Y axis title. So you could go into Y axis title and put something in here. I'll put crimes and that will show up. You can also click on the scatter plot points or the line and customize those. For example, we can change the shape of the scatter plot points to say triangles and I can change the color to something like orange. And that change will show up on my graph. Once you're happy with how your graph looks, you can go to the floppy disk button here and click save. I'm going to navigate to the folder that I've been using, my Stata Tutorials folder, and then I will save my graph. Now, it's important to note here that the default file type is a Stata graph .gph file extension. I recommend that you always save your graphs in that format first. I'll call mine Crime Police. The reason that we saved it as a GPH file first is that we can close out of the graph and then access it at any point later by simply getting back into the graph editor, clicking open and loading up the graph. Mine was called Crime Police. And our old graph is back up. I can go back into the graph editor and I can continue tweaking it. Once you're happy with how it looks, then we can save as into a file format that we can use. You can save your graph as a PNG if you want it as a simple image file, or you can also save it as a PDF, which is what I usually do. Once I've done that, you can see that it has saved my graph as a PDF. I'll go over to the folder that I saved my graph into and open it up. You can see that my graph is all here as a PDF. Many of the changes that you make inside the graph editor can also be done using options. This is very convenient if your graph is created at the end of a long do file that you might have changed something at the beginning of the do file that slightly tweaked everything and now you're gonna to have to go into the graph editor and make all those title changes and everything like that manually. And you don't wanna to have to do that over and over, so sometimes this is a really good option. I'll go back to the two-way command that I had before and add an option using a comma. If I want to create a title for my graph, for example, I'll write title and then in parentheses, type in the title of my graph. I'll put crime and police again. Now that I run this, the title will automatically show up and I didn't have to go into the graph editor and put it in myself. Now, of course, you can also go into the graph editor anyway and change this to whatever you want. And then you can go ahead and save this just like before. There are many other options that you can add, such as Y title to give us a Y axis title. Remember that whenever you're adding options, separate them by space with crimes. When I run this, I now have 
crimes automatically showing up as my y-axis title. One last kind of graph I want to show you is a histogram. To do this, all we do is type hist and then the variable we want to use. Let's use crime. This will generate a histogram that you can also go into the graph editor and tweak just like before. One useful option for histogram is to determine the number of bins that the histogram will use. To do this, we type in bin, and then in parentheses, we specify the number, say four. And now I get a more consolidated histogram. This has just been a quick intro into making graphs in Stata. There's a lot of other options that are out there, and I encourage you to check out the visual overview on the Stata website, as well as just play around with the graph editor a little bit and see what you can come up with. If you have any questions, do let me know. Thanks for watching.